Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. My name is Nate, and welcome back to another weather forecast discussion for May 3rd, 2022. It's been a while since we've made a video here, and what better time to do so than now, as we are now in the heart of severe weather season. The Storm Prediction Center is hard at work as they issue risks for severe weather for Wednesday, Thursday, Sunday, and Monday. What specifically can we see from those days will be all answered here later on in the video, but before we get started, please be sure to share this information with as many people as possible, as because we are in the heart of severe weather season, that also means that more significant weather is possible due to the favorable environment. So if you guys could, please be sure to share this video with friends and family on social media. Hit that thumbs up button down below to help me out with the YouTube algorithm so we can spread this out to more and more people. Subscribe if you are new and turn on notifications to stay up to date with all the latest information that I provide, including a live stream that will be accessible to everyone for free on the YouTube channel because there is expected to be some significant weather, which would be on May 4th. 2022. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. We're going to look at the simulated radar here with the North American model. The time is above me in Eastern Daylight Time. And so if you're in Central, you're just going to have to subtract one hour, Mountain two hours, and Pacific three hours. You can see as this continues to move on through, we have a little bit of a severe weather risk over in the portions of the Ohio River Valley, as well as the Carolinas. That isn't expected to be too significant, but there is still the chance for some severe weather, some strong damaging winds, spotty hail, and the threat for a tornado or two as possible. In the other portions of the United States, we also have some snow and rain into portions of the Rockies. We also have some leftover precipitation around Vancouver Island and British Columbia. And so that isn't really expected to be all too much here. But all of this precipitation on the western half of the United States is going to be the big maker here for what our new event is going to be here on Wednesday. So as this plays out here from Wednesday morning into Wednesday afternoon, we get some prefrontal convection, some showers and thunderstorms that begin to form across much of southern Kansas into Oklahoma as well as northern Texas. That all is normal. That'll continue to basically meander throughout much of the day. But then as this continues to advance towards the late afternoon into the early evening hours, we have a boundary that develops. The NAM 3 kilometer actually emphasizes this boundary a lot more than some of the other models. And I'll show you what the HRRR actually says here in a bit, but we have this boundary that continues to move on through, and along this boundary, there could be the potential for some showers and thunderstorms to form, maybe even a supercell to where we are expecting potentially tornadoes or even strong tornadoes within this environment. As a matter of fact, the Storm Prediction Center has issued a 3 out of 5 on the severe weather scale indicated in that orange, as well as a 2 out of 5 in yellow and a 1 out of 5 in the dark green, with a 10% chance of tornadoes indicated in that yellow area as well as the mesh area with all the black dotted lines that is a risk for significant tornadoes as well and within this just general boundary more or less that is the big thing to watch now the other thing to watch is this dry line back here you guys can't see it but if we switch over to the dew points we actually have a huge convergence of moisture here where we have a lot of moisture on the eastern side of this boundary and then on the western side of the boundary we have some very dry dew points here indicating Indicating that we do have a dry line set up here. Any storms that form along the dry line can produce tornadoes, but I'm more concerned about the large hail, which is possible within this environment. So areas near Lubbock, Childress, Amarillo, you guys need to be on high alert tomorrow as well for some very large hail and maybe, of course, the chance for the tornadoes. But speaking of dew points, you can see out in front of this environment here into portions of northern Texas as well as southern Oklahoma where that boundary moves on through. You have some very ripe dew points, very ripe dew points, which can indicate that we do have some showers and thunderstorms that could form and could even sustain within this environment. So that is something to note here as this continues to progress. And let's play this out, because now that we know there's a bunch of moisture in the environment, you see, oh boy, that is a big storm right there. Believe it or not, the NAM 3 kilometer prints this as a supercell, and I have not seen a supercell being actually printed on the NAM 3 kilometer in a long time here, guys. So this is something to consider, but you know, you see compared to some other models, here. We have stuff like the HRRR to where we still have that prefrontal convection into the early stages of the afternoon. And then as this continues to move on through, well, you don't really get your thunderstorms that form out in front, except for this big kind of messy mode. They are semi-discreet though. So if these storms can get 
a little bit more space between some of each other, you're going to get some strong tornadoes within this environment, no doubt in my mind. And also note the storms that form from the dry line here. Backtrack here a little bit. You can see how those thunderstorms formed right off as to where that dry line was, and they have moved further and further east. So that is something to note here as well as this continues to move on through. If those thunderstorms can take advantage of this environment, we could potentially see something really interesting. But then after this all moves on through, this all just forms into a giant line and pushes on through into portions of Arkansas. So, so a lot of strong damaging winds overnight as this continues to move on through into Thursday's event. And that's kind of the one thing that the North American model and the HRRR agrees upon is that after these storms really move on through, it's going to be a big wind event. You can see the big line here that moves on through. That'll be a, more of a QLCS mode, and that'll kind of set up for what happens as well on Thursday. So that's just kind of one of those interesting things to where as this all kind of, you know, gets done and over with and passes the midnight hours, things start to become a real wind maker as this moves on through into portions of northern Texas as well as portions of Kansas and Oklahoma. Now I have one final area to talk about here. This is from the HRRR once again. I know I've been bouncing between all sorts of different models. Watch out over here in southeastern portions of Colorado. Big time hail maker possible over there if you live into that general area. South and east of Pueblo uh, maybe near the Lamar areas, I could see some large hail and maybe the chance for a tornado possible. But other than that, uh, that's pretty much it from the event from a, uh, you know, a storm standpoint. We can also see from our convective available potential energy numbers here. This is basically how much energy there is in the atmosphere for thunderstorms to form or sustain. And you can see that this kind of cuts off here across portions of central Oklahoma. So anywhere north of that, I'm not really too concerned about for the main significant tornado threat. I think it's mainly going to be localized south of that warm front here to where the open warm sector can reside. And I also want to note for you all, notice some cape that is starting to kind of recede up into portions of Colorado as well. That's kind of the reason why I'm thinking that Colorado could potentially have some cold core cells that could produce some large hail. But other than that, uh, maybe a tornado, not really too much. The big event is more or less here in the portions of the northern panhandle of Texas in towards northern Texas, uh, as well as even into central and southern portions of Oklahoma. But uh, high amounts of Cape for the most part, you can see over 2000 joules per kilogram, even up to 3000 joules per kilogram localized within this environment. And that is good enough. You typically want 1,500 to 1,800. And uh, this speaks for itself as to how much Cape we actually have. Now our low level jet, which really sets apart which storms could be tornadic or not, continues to be very active throughout the majority of the day. Actually, you can see how we have a lot of these oranges that continue to sit over much of Oklahoma and Northern Texas. And that's kind of the reason why if we can get some storm that can take advantage of this environment, we're expecting these storms to be significant at least and uh, continue to move on through. But once again, that also needs to be the case to where they need to be discreet. you can also notice here that our low level jet starts to get stronger overnight. That also is when the threat starts to kind of switch off to be more of a tornadic threat to now of a linear threat, a wind threat. So uh, that is something to note here. But if you can also get, once again, a storm that's out by itself in front of the, you know, the linear mode in front of that giant line that we were talking about, then sure, yeah, you can get a strong tornado. But the main threat is gonna be more or less in the afternoon into the evening and just before dusk, maybe right around dusk is when you can get your strong storms that could be, uh, you know, significant tornadic wise. We also have some very strong wind shear over this area from the 700 millibar level, a little bit higher in the atmosphere. So our mid-level jet here that's existing throughout much of Oklahoma and Texas, and this is relatively consistent as well. We do have some strong wind shear over here throughout much of the afternoon into the evening. So that is something to note as this continues to move on through. And then of course our wind shear starts to get stronger as we move into the overnight hours and officially into tomorrow morning. So when it's all set and done we take all those things together and we bring it into something called the significant tornado parameter now this doesn't tell you the entire story all right it doesn't tell you what the entire environment basically is as to whether or not we're going to have tornadoes whether or not we're not going to have tornadoes all right but this is just going to tell you as to if a storm forms in what type of environment this thing is in uh, depending upon whether or not it's a strong storm or a weak storm, strong environment, weak environment to produce tornadoes. So this is the significant tornado parameter. And you can see as this exists through into portions of the afternoon to the evening, we see along the dry line, we do have high amounts of significant tornado parameter. We also have some
some decently high values of significant tornado parameter in northern Texas as well as into southern Oklahoma. That is kind of our area to watch for a potential supercell to form within there. And so uh, something to uh, note as this continues to exist. And then, of course, as you go overnight, that's when the significant tornado parameter really goes up. But once again, that's the linear threat. So don't pay attention too much to that. It's more of the stuff that is before that into the late afternoon hours. So we do have a decent environment for severe weather possible here on Wednesday. All right. So now let's zoom out a little bit and let's talk about the next day. Let's talk about Thursday. And we do have a three out of five in the severe weather scale from the Storm Prediction Center. They are indicating that there is the threat for very strong damaging winds as well as a few tornadoes within this environment. So let's take a look with our simulated radar here. From Wednesday into Thursday, you can see how the line continues to progress. I think what they are thinking is that this giant boundary, this giant cold front, is just going to continue to slam on through and uh, create a lot of strong damaging winds. So let's see here from the North American model. Well, the line kind of breaks up a little bit, but there's a new line that begins to try and develop behind this, starting near the areas near like Springfield, Missouri, to for, like Fort Smith and stuff like that. And then that kind of just moves on through, but doesn't really materialize as all too much here and uh, just continues to convect a bunch of scattered showers and thunderstorms. Maybe some storms could try and spin up. We'll have to see a little bit. Uh, but within that line, that's where I am assuming is where they are talking about further threat of severe weather. And we're just going to have to watch out for how this continues to progress. Still have a lot of moisture that is expected to move on through. You can see how there's a lot of dew points, really high dew points across the board in Arkansas, Missouri, even in the portions of Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Tennessee, stuff like that. So we do have some relatively high dew points throughout the area. And we do even have some localized amounts of Cape here on the back side of this near that boundary. We have some of those yellow areas, which is about 2000 joules per kilogram. That's good enough for severe weather to form in my honest opinion. So that's going to be something else to note. But it also looks like there's going to be some severe weather on the southern side here, which would be from areas like Lufkin all the way over to like Del Rio, Texas and stuff like that. So I would watch out for that. Maybe some large hail with some of those storms, maybe some gusty winds as well. If there was going to be a tornado threat, it would be on the eastern side of Texas near Louisiana border, kind of somewhere around that area. But other than that, uh, not really too concerned in regards to a tornado threat. I think the main tornado threat would be over here in the portions of Missouri and Arkansas. Now I'm going to zoom back just a little bit just to show you this giant bowling ball of a low. Look at this thing spin counterclockwise completely. This is our upper level jet at 500 millibars. This is six kilometers above ground level. And you can see the huge counterclockwise spin in the atmosphere and how this thing just continues to just spin more and more and more. I mean, look at this, guys. This is just kind of satisfying to watch. Really cool stuff as this continues to move on through. But anyways, back to the uh, actual weather here. Almost got distracted there for a second. Uh, the wind shear does seem to strengthen as this transitions from Wednesday into Thursday and continue to stay in that kind of track as this moves on through. And so I would expect some very strong wind shear in the upper levels, allowing storms to sustain if they continue to do so. And of course, our 800 millibar low level jet, which continues to uh, crank through all the way into portions of Thursday. Very strong low level jet continues to extend all the way from the late hours of the evening into the overnight hours. So something to watch out for does seem to be more of a wind threat uh, more than a tornado threat, but you could still see tornadoes within discrete cells. Once again, kind of similar to the day prior, but with not as much energy in the atmosphere. And just for laughs, let's take a look at our significant tornado parameter here. Well, I mean, it's not as high as the day prior. There is some higher values over here in the portions of Texas and Louisiana, but along that back end of that boundary, there is a little bit of significant tornado parameter that kind of tells me could be a localized tornado threat if storms could form. You can see how it actually was stronger just a few hours before into portions near Mena and Fort Smith, Arkansas. So that's kind of something to watch out for, especially if those storms do convect. So now we're going to have to go out a little bit further and we're going to have to use a lower resolution model to do it because all our higher resolution models don't go out this far. Uh, so let's take a look at what the North American model says beyond us. Let's go for Friday here, see what we got here. It seems we still have a big line that continues to move on through and convect. I'm seeing areas over here like the eastern portions of Kentucky, Tennessee, all the way down towards Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, even towards New Orleans and Louisiana. They can get some activity as well as the potential for some severe weather even past that over in the portions of the mid-Atlantic. Uh, you guys can get some activity as well. So something to watch out for 
within this environment. There is some cape within this environment. I will say that much. I think a potential severe weather event is possible across portions of the Carolinas and Southern Virginia, as well as maybe even into portions of Eastern Kentucky and Tennessee could potentially get some activity with the amounts of cape that we have here in this environment. And we even have some pretty high dew points to boot with some of this general area here as well. So yeah, I would say there could be some severe weather possible within this environment. Specifically, I would say over here along a corridor from the Carolinas over into portions of Eastern Kentucky and extreme Eastern Tennessee. Now this is when our low pressure system really starts to fire off. It brings our vorticity and it starts to move off too. You can see our low pressure system now move on through into portions of the Eastern United States. This low pressure system is expected to move off of the coast and then uh, surprisingly enough, actually come back and produce some precipitation along the East Coast. And we'll show that you here with the Euro model. We're going to take a look at the simulated radar here with the Euro model as well. We have a lot of precipitation now starting to move on through into portions of the Pacific Northwest now. This is along the Friday to Saturday, you know, time frame here to where they can get a lot of precipitation that can move on through maybe even earlier than that into like the early morning hours of Friday to like, you know, Thursday night. Uh, but as this continues to move on through, you can see how we have a new disturbance that is going to begin to try and develop here along the central portions of the United States. We have this uh, kind of area to where the isobars are starting to circle around. That is where our low pressure system could begin to form within this environment. And we could be talking about some severe weather across the central plains. Now, a better identifiable factor for where severe weather could be is with our 500 millibar wind shear here. You can see that we have our new low pressure system that is starting to build over into the western United States and bring a lot of wind shear across much of the central United States. So that is expected to continue to move on through more and more and more, actually create some more wind shear. We have a new high pressure system that starts to jut out in front of the low pressure system. And we could be talking about another severe weather setup for portions of the central United States, as well as even into portions near the southern Rockies and New Mexico as well. Maybe uh, we'll have to see how much moisture return actually is involved within that area. And then, of course, as this continues to move on through, we actually have uh, quite the sandwich here, to be completely honest with you all. We have a low pressure system that's over here across portions of Florida. That is where our low pressure system comes back in. It's spun around and is now creating some uh, precipitation across much of the eastern United States. We have our big high pressure system, so that's not really allowing this other low pressure system to come in through and bring a lot of severe weather. So what that kind of tells me a little bit is that we could be potentially seeing a high plains event here relatively soon, maybe some severe weather potential over there for portions of the Dakotas, Nebraska, as well as into other areas of Minnesota, but it probably won't be all too strong because all the moisture is going to go towards that thing over here into portions of Florida. So that's going to be something to watch out for a lot later on into the week next week. But regardless, we have a heck of a setup that is uh, going to unfold over the next week to maybe even week and a half. So I hope you guys continue to stay tuned to the channel. I'll be sure to give you guys all the information that you may need. And uh, if you did enjoy the video, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button down below because uh, that, once again, does help me get this out to more and more people on YouTube, essentially helping me spread the information. That's going to be it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you are new. Turn on notifications to stay up to date with all the latest information that I will provide. Once again, we will be live streaming tomorrow, so please watch out for that. Also, please be sure to share this information with friends and family and on social media. And uh, follow me on social media. Link will be in the description down below. And uh, yeah, that's going to be it for me. Enough rambling. I'll catch you guys tomorrow. See you all next time.